Hallelujah. And tonight I want to share with us something very powerful. Romans chapter 12. When a believer gets born again and filled with the Spirit of God, the Bible tells us that there is a translation, I always say this, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son. Hallelujah. Now, that initial experience, look up please, that initial experience at salvation does not affect your soul and your body necessarily. Are you listening to me? That transformation, that regeneration happens uh, from the realm of your spirit. But it takes the renewing of your mind. It takes changing values, philosophies, priorities. And this is what the Holy Spirit, one of the primary ministries of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer, is not to make the person look anointed alone but to bring the person to that point where you have been translated from one system, one value system, one code of operation into another system. And the degree to which you yield to the Holy Spirit to align is the degree to which you will find yourself walking in consistency with the Word of God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. I beseech you therefore brethren. So he's talking to brethren. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that ye, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that, prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. The Bible says, do not be conformed. In other words, there is a mindset. Please listen to me carefully. This is a very, very, very important message. Especially at this time in Nigeria and in the world. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that we are not the same with they that are of the world. Do you believe that? Do you believe it? It's one thing to accept something. It's another thing to believe. To believe means to conceive as a reality in your spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible separates us. And it lets us know that we do not belong to the category of the world, the carnal minded, the natural man. God has exalted us to a realm where we operate by another law. We operate by different sets of rules hallelujah and it's not enough to confess that you are a christian you must allow the holy spirit and the ministry of the word to bring you to that position experientially otherwise you will find yourself born again but you will not be able to walk in the victory of jesus christ are you listening to me so this is very very important i found out something interesting in scripture please look up as i began to search through scripture i found out that there were certain things that made god angry there were not many times in the bible that god was angry even with his people but i found out that there were certain things in scripture that every time it occurred it made god angry i mean god was angry and he responded to it in a very in a very interesting way and so i found out that if we do not align ourselves, we'll get God so angry with us all the time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, do not be conformed. What does that mean? That means that there is pressure. Attempting to bring your mindset. Listen, a mindset talks of um, your a sum total of your ideologies. A sum total of your philosophies, your value system. What makes up your belief system? What... Um, what informs your convictions about God, about men, about life? 
And can I tell you something? We come from different backgrounds and as diverse as our backgrounds are, so are our mindsets. We have packed every kind of thing from different systems, different experiences. And when we all come into the kingdom, the Bible says we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. What happens? You come as you are, but you don't remain as you are. Are you listening to me the problem with the body of christ is we want to come as we are and remain as we are no no you come as you are and then the holy spirit engages you in the ministry of transformation hallelujah your work with the spirit should bring a predictable result I should be able to look at you after a season of walking with the word and with the spirit. You should look like something. And that portrait is the one we call Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. He said, let this mind, the word let there is permit. Permit this mindset. Jesus walked upon the earth. He had a mindset. Are you listening to me? Jesus had a mindset. He had, he, he had a way he behaved. The way he responded to people. The way he, when, when they, they believed that um, there would not be fish, he spoke as one with authority. They caught uh, a prostitute and brought to him and he responded. He seemed to operate uh, with a value system that was not known to the then Jewish nation. And they were very surprised. What kind of mind is this? How do you think? What is your thinking pattern like? Can I tell you something? Every successful man in life has a mindset. Whether in the secular or in the kingdom. And a healthy mindset is not part of the gift of the spirit. Are you listening to me? Oh no. The Bible says, get wisdom. Buy the truth. It puts a pie strat there. Hallelujah. You cannot receive a kingdom mindset as an impartation. No, why? Because there are already forces in your mind. The Bible calls them strongholds. The weapons of our warfare, the Bible says, are not carnal, but mighty through God. Hallelujah. What do those weapons do? To the pulling down of strongholds. They exist in the realm of the mind. It's a casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. One of the biggest ministries of a believer is to align, not just to preach and go for evangelism, to align with the Holy Spirit such that he begins to work in you and produce in you a kind of mindset that only belongs to kingdom citizens you are not just a kingdom citizen because you bear a christian name even if your name is kingdom it doesn't make you a kingdom citizen hallelujah there is a mindset and can i tell you something Dr. Mike Murdoch said something and I respect so much. He said the world has embraced the person of Jesus Christ, but we have rejected his principles. I mean the church. While the world has rejected the person of Jesus Christ, but they have embraced his principles. How true. Hallelujah. And so there is not just, it's not just enough for us to pray. We've had 21 days prayer and fasting. You can never rise above the level of your mindset. Are you listening to me? You can never know. I will show you from scripture that the mindset of a man can limit God in his life. Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Please listen to this message very carefully and let the Holy Spirit. Psalm 78. God began to walk with the nation of Israel and he showed them mighty things in Egypt. Hallelujah. The ten plagues and he parted the Red Sea. He did a lot of things to prove to them that he was Lord. But they had a mindset. Do you realize that they had been in Egypt for 430 years? 
Listen, 430 years is enough for you to adopt a mindset because you were born there. Are you listening to me? Now, when the Lord called them, that's why he had to separate them from Egypt. When God calls a man, he takes you out of the environment that created that wrong mindset. And then he walks on you. Then he sends you back as a deliverer. That's what he did to Moses. Moses was born with a mindset. He took Moses out to the backside of the mountain for 40 years. Let me announce to you that God is not in a hurry. He can wait. Are you listening to me? For 40 years, he wanted to use Moses. But the mindset of Moses kept limiting God. Until he walked on Moses in a way and a manner that his mind could now release God. And then he said, all right, let's walk together. The exact same thing happened to Abraham. God had a blessing for Abraham in his spirit. And he wanted to communicate it. But the mindset of Abraham would not allow the Lord to bless him. And one day the Lord said, how do I open this guy's mindset? He said, Abraham, come out. Look at the stars. He said, count them. And Abraham began to count. And he could not count. He said, now, this is how I will bless you. Finally, Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him as righteousness. Hallelujah. Psalm 78. Verse 10. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law and forgot his works and his wonders that he had shown them. Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt in the field of Zoan. And then you read down verse 17. And they sinned yet the more against him by provoking the most high. Interesting. This is the sin they committed. What was the sin? The Bible says they provoked the Most High in the wilderness. So God can be provoked. They provoked the Most High. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And they tested God in their heart by asking according to their desire. Yea, they spoke against God. And they said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? That's verse 19. He said, Can God and God furnish a table in the wilderness. Are you listening to me? After all of the things that the Lord did to them, God told them, I'm taking you into a land that flows with milk and honey. And those guys would not believe God. One moment they are up, and the next moment they are saying, Moses would have gone back to Egypt. You see, the mindset was still there. Can I tell you something? It took a day for them to cross the Red Sea. But it took more than 40 years for Egypt to leave their mind. The fact that you are born again and you have left the world system does not mean the mindset of the world has left you. It will take the operation of the Spirit of God. You know why I'm saying that? Because you have built your entire life and trust on those values. You grew up with them. They taught you those values in schools. Now God is saying you've got to drop those values. Hallelujah. You have grown up with your father talking to you all the time and say, Son... In this life, money doesn't grow on trees. No giving, don't give anybody anything. All I give you, keep it. It belongs to you. Then you begin to study the Bible and the Bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than is me. Two kingdoms are fighting. There is a war that begins to fight in you. Your father is saying, well, if you like, do what you want to do. And the word of God is saying, this is the principle. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, say, will a man rob God? He said, yet, ye have, wherein have we robbed you? He said, the whole nation of Israel, bring in your tithes that there may be meat in my house. He said, and prove me now here which saith the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven and shower upon you a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. He said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake and it shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. All of these blessings, you see, but you have been built in a system. Are you listening to me? The Bible says if that same spirit that resurrected Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body, but you've lived all your life on drugs. Nothing is wrong with drugs and medicine and all of that, but I'm telling you that there is a higher life. Are you listening to me? And now you have to start contending with those laws. You have grown up with a mindset and you live in a world that says, well, whatever, whatever will be, will be. 
whatever will be will be if i die today i die if i'm sick today i'm sick whatever will be whatever life gives me then you begin to study in god's word and he says that this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth he said thou thou should be careful that you observe it he said then shall thy ways be prosperous and thou shall have good success hmm. and then deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 says it shall come to pass in that day if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i commanded this day he said that i will set you on high and all these blessings shall come upon you and shall overtake you there are two kingdoms fighting the mindset that you got from your village living with your grandmother living with all kinds of things whenever the lord begins to speak of blessings you are not ready for those things because of a mindset do you realize how that satan has crippled the church the body of christ the nation of nigeria by giving us a mindset that came from the african culture are you listening to me there is a mindset that the african culture gave us is a mindset of servitude we inherited it when when the colonial masters came after they finished with nigeria they left a mindset of servitude and that mindset still follows even intelligent students on campus because the moment a student enters school the next thing he's thinking of he do, he's not thinking of productivity he's not thinking of creativity he's thinking of what servanthood let me just get somebody and let me be a secretary a mindset they limited god in the wilderness by saying can god and the bible said that statement provoked god and god was angry how dare you limit me hallelujah so we're saying lord bless me lord make me this i am the head and not the tail calm down if you do not understand the principles of the kingdom be sure that you're going to live a frustrated life are you getting blessed the principles do you know something about god the bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne that's a dangerous statement that means the fact that you are a christian does not necessarily mean that you just walk in victory like that there are rules that you engage and if you don't engage them i tell you the truth you will leave gray only to tell your stories to your children this is what is happening in the nation of nigeria But if we are to be the victorious people, there is a mindset. Say after me, there is a mindset. I need to have. Say there is a mindset. And that mindset comes from the word of God. The Bible says do not be conformed. That means refuse it. If you don't refuse it, you will inherit it. That mindset is in the films you watch. That mindset is in the news you listen to every day. They are called mind control systems. They give you a false view about life. You finish watching a film and you are afraid about life. There's no audacity to walk in grace and power again. It's a mindset that inflicts fear. It's a mindset that inflicts defeat. It's a mindset that keeps you in servitude. And so you are always looking for someone to help you when you are the deliverer that's the mindset that makes us to blame our parents is the mindset that makes nigerians never to take responsibility over their lives there is no nation in the world that runs away from responsibility like nigerians the government is not doing this my father did this they told my father to be serious he wasn't serious okay now that it has happened what are you doing about it my stupid father i'm this and that. keep insulting people there is a mindset and many of us are taking those mindsets and we're laughing we're saying hallelujah i'm entering a blessed place you are not you are not you are entering in the realm of the spirit but it may never manifest in this realm hallelujah the bible says the just shall live by faith what does it mean to have faith it means that you lay your life upon the foundation of the integrity of god's word hmm. hebrews 11 it says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen he said for by it this faith the elders obtained report a good report verse 3 says through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god the systems hallelujah 
we live in a culture where we are taught to respond to things in carnal ways hallelujah ah boko haram where will this come and happen boko haram and people begin you see look at the panic that is around you feel it in the air many believers your faith has become stupidity in your room you laugh at yourself and say man is this god thing serious we are just fooling ourselves here it's only because you have not said it in your mind you have said let's keep god aside though and walk with common sense now <laughs> now don't laugh it's a dangerous mindset if it does not change you'll never be victorious in life men who rule the world are men of conviction are you listening to me if you get up today believing that this speaker is god if you can convince people you'll find followers that will follow you this is the issue dr Ma dead men rule the world the ideologies of dead men are the ones who are ruling the world and those who are alive are picking those mindsets and we are running with them tonight god wants to give us a mindset for victory are you listening to me there is a mindset jesus came from a city called nazareth let's start from there the bible makes us to understand that when nathaniel was told to come and see jesus he said can anything good come out of where can anything good come out of kano can anything good come out of zamfara can anything come out of your village that the map is not in this country but he said can anything good come out of nazareth when people speak like this they have a track record in other words they have seen nazarenes not become anything and he said can anything good that's the first mindset that you need to conquer many of us give a lot of excuses there are many of us today who lie and say me i'm from i'm from lagos then when there's a flood in lagos say, no 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 i'm from Bielsa. what kind of life do you want to live you know why you are defining your life by where you are coming from not where you are going to can anything good come out of nazareth do you not realize that those who have changed the course of history came out out of nowhere men who were resilient in their convictions took responsibility over their destiny dared the word of god the bible talks not the bible history tells us about maria woodward eater men and women like catherine kuman these were ordinary people they dared to take the word of god when they saw the word of god they said lord if this is what you are saying i will change history with it and they refused their parents said don't be ambitious they said no way i know where i'm going men of conviction i do not see men of conviction in the church we are men who are, our faith is shaky and slippery and that tells us it's not founded upon the principles of god's word when you truly believe the word you can die believing it the depth of your conviction is the degree to which you can manifest faith hmm. if i die of sickness today the last word that will come out of my mouth before i die is by his stripes i am healed The Bible says they limited God. Have you been limiting God? Every time God said he wants to bless you in your mind, you give God the person to use and bless you. My uncle. God, you must be talking about Uncle Sam. Strangers shall feed your flock. He said your gates shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Do you believe this thing? See, let me tell you something. I'm very serious tonight. Do you believe it? don't just nod this is a question god is asking because life will ask you and you must answer every single one born of a woman if you must cross this button into greatness life will ask you the depth of your vision jesus said destroy this temple and i'll build it in three days ah i must be a man of conviction do you believe the word of god or you are just holding on to god and then putting your leg on something else and say lord this journey we need to use wisdom we need to do here and then hang on because you have a track record of failing people anytime so i'm not ready to let this thing fall in an ocean look at what he told peter peter said if it be thou bid me come 
and he said peter do you believe me this much come let me prove to you i'm the one capable satire you will have to step out of that boat and walk upon the waters this is what makes champions if it be thou bid me come and thomas was saying peter peter how many times did i call you he said well, well peter i would like to record the history of how you died you can go and the bible says when peter began to walk see every time you read about miracles in the bible realize that before the miracle happened the, the people were not laughing the way you are laughing when you read that story every testimony you hear here at that point it was a moment of faith mindsets are you listening to me the bible tells us in the book of numbers remember i sent a post it says they were how many how many spies many of you don't know some are saying four how can it be four hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah how many 12 12 spies were sent now god had already spoken god gets annoyed when he speaks and we don't believe this is what they call limitation god is not insult let me tell you something um if i tell you if i tell you that we will organize the welfare to make cake for you and later i see you sweating and praying and doubting and say hey will this cake come i look at you and say what is the big deal did you not see people celebrate and enjoy cake here yeah? this is exactly how god gets angry when god speaks to you he weighs his ability first and then he looks at his ability and says, I'm able. Go ahead, trust me. But we have several believers that have mindsets that are not programmed for victory. And hear me, friends, some of you are in final years, some of you are already working. There is the mindset that is going to bring destruction for many upon this land. This is why I am preaching to you. Many of you may feel this message is not important, but the Nigeria you used to know, Nigeria you... Are you listening to me? many of you have been shielded by your parents and families so you have not had the opportunity to see the reality of what i'm saying life will be waiting for you in front of contagora square as soon as you are carrying your you are dropping your graduation gown you say welcome there is a system but you must ride against it and say no way hallelujah ten of them came they said moses were you stupid when you sent us do I ever try this it's even by god's grace that we came back are you playing those guys had six fingers six toes they were of the descendants of 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 of, of the they were the anarchites we we cannot lie there was there was honey and there was this the fruit there we at least we were able to taste it but kai forget about it we're not getting there go and tell god that that promised land he should carry it and change the location and while they were speaking god was listening God was joining in the conversation and God was not finding it funny. Are you listening to me? Oh, hallelujah. The name of one of the two is Joshua. Hmm. The Bible says, but Joshua and Caleb came. They said, boy, let's go up at once. Why are we waiting? Look at two people, the same place. They said, let's go up. We are able to take these guys. We tasted the fruit. I mean, this fruit is, we need to get these guys out of the way. Joshua, how are you getting them? Let's go at once. Mm. At once. At once. That a student can look at his result and you can see probation. And while they are laughing at you, you laugh and say, the world changer is still there. Tears may be in my eyes. My lecturer insulted me. But there is a mindset. I refuse to conform. I refuse to call myself a failure. It's an abomination. It's not in the constitution of my kingdom. I refuse to bow. I refuse to give in. I'm walking in my high places. It's a mindset. There are many of us that are too weak. Words kill you at once. When someone looks at you, maybe your lecturer or someone and just says hey, you you don't you look like a failure for two weeks you'll be lean you'll be sick they say why he said somebody said so don't you realize that you need this kind of people on your path to success who else will testify 
he make a table before me in the presence not the absence listen you must refuse to bow this world is a wicked world it will make you bow to things that are not consistent with the word of god anything i refuse to say anything about my life that is not i refuse it the bible says finally brethren philippians chapter 4 verse 8 whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are noble whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are if there be any good report if there be any virtue think on these things the Bible tells us what to think on. Are you listening to me? It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are what? How many of you have been thinking on lies? A lie is anything God did not say. Anything. Whether your government said it, a lie is anything God did not say. We have believed in a lie as a country. We have believed in a lie as individuals we have believed in a lie many ministries have believed in a lie many people have believed in a lie oh it says whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise it tells you what what have you been thinking on hallelujah you carry your result of first semester 100 level and you're in 400 level you are just looking at it and you're just looking at it and you are meditating you're looking at it and then maybe the person who printed out the result wrote something and said funny student exclamation mark and you look and you stand in the mirror you ask somebody say sorry am i funny what why are people saying this Or somebody sees you and say you say you, every time yellow trouser or every time yellow trouser and you go back and you are crying do you not see your future do you not see that it is better than your yesterday you must refuse see not conforming means refusing there is a level of stubbornness that will take you to your promised land you must refuse you can't bend into everything Do you know how many people have talked me down in life? Oh, you don't want to imagine. But I'm standing and moving by the glory of God every day. Do you? Listen, I, I'm serious. You see ENI and see Koinonia today. Do you know? Do you know how that we have had to be resilient walking by the word? Many of us do not believe the word enough. You can like, you can share and um, god's grace will continue to make it active with contents that would that would bless you and um subscribe to our, our our youtube channel and you can like and share all our other pages our platforms and the lord himself will truly bless you bless you sincerely